Hi, this is Saul Marcus. I am a naturopathic doctor and this is my second video I'm putting on YouTube about interpreting thyroid labs. Um, this one will go over T3, T4, and reverse T3. Okay, on this chart we could see that from the hypothalamus and pituitary TSH or thyroid stimulating hormone is produced and that tells the thyroid to produce mostly T4. Then T4 is going to be converted outside the thyroid into either T3 or reverse T3. Now it's important to realize that a block anywhere can cause a um, functional thyroid problem. If TSH is low, then the thyroid won't be told to make enough T4, but there can also be problems in the conversion of T4 to T3, or there might be an increased conversion of T4 into reverse T3. In my previous video, I went into a lot of detail talking about um, TSH and functional issues in the production of TSH and why that might be low. So I'm not going to cover that in this video. What I am going to go over is what can be happening preventing T4 from converting into um, T3. And this conversion is going to be dependent upon the enzyme 5' prime deionidase. So that's what we need if we want to convert T4 to our active T3. There are a bunch of different factors which are needed for the conversion of T4 to T3. Um, selenium, selenium is uh, very much involved in that enzyme's activity and in some people they may simply need selenium although that might be exaggerated. Um, definitely if everyone takes selenium that th does not mean it's going to be a panacea cure for everyone but for some people it will be very helpful. But we can see that there are a myriad of other um, factors, other nutrients, iron, zinc, iodine, vitamins A, B2, vitamin E, antioxidants such as glutathione, and something that I'm going to get into more detail a little bit later on, other hormones, androgens, um, growth hormone, cortisol, those all play a factor, and sleep also is important. So let's go over what things interfere with the 5' prime deionidase enzyme. Selenium deficiency I mentioned before. Low protein diets. I know that there are experts who promote low protein diets and they can help well help some people in certain circumstances. However, many other people will not feel good on low protein diets and sometimes people don't realize how little protein they are getting. I've seen it and I know many of my colleagues have seen it where someone comes in feeling absolutely horrible, no energy, they feel like they can't function. You look over their diet, they see there's low protein, you get them to add protein into their diet and they start feeling link a lot better um, quickly. Um, if you don't have enough protein and the body doesn't have enough um, basic substrate that it needs to go through all metabolic processes, so it slows down. It slows down by lowering metabolic rate. That means lowering thyroid hormone. It's that simple. Um, blood sugar, if that's off, that can interfere with thyroid hormone. It can interfere with cortisol. All our hormones work together. One of the major misconceptions I see in terms of um, people trying to understand endocrinology is myoptic focus on one single hormone. So you'll have your thyroid people, you'll have your blood sugar people, you'll have your testosterone people. Uh, if the, all the hormones are working together. If blood sugar is thrown off, that's going to throw off our major stress hormone cortisol cortisol gets thrown off, that can start throwing off the conversion of thyroid hormone and thyroid hormone production because the body is going to try to keep all these things in balance and it all has to work together. I talk a little bit about euthyroid 6 syndrome. This is something that all medical doctors are familiar with and basically you have someone who has some major illness, they end up in the hospital and during the time with, if they might be getting a surgery, something like that, if a blood test is run, the doctors will see that TSH goes down and thyroid hormone goes down. And, they're no, and they know not to treat this because this is called euthyroid 6 syndrome. Euthyroid, uh, it's a confusing term, but basically it means um, normal thyroid, um, low thyroid um, syndrome. And what happens is when the body is under a lot of stress 
as a self-protective mechanism, thyroid hormone decreases because when you lower the metabolic rate, that has some protective effect on the body. If someone is in a catabolic state, catabolic means their body is tearing down, is wearing down, then the more you lower metabolic rate, the slower the body is going to wear down. This is why starvation diets don't work. If you starve yourself, then the body will realize that it's in a crisis and it will lower metabolic rate or lower thyroid hormone, so the starvation doesn't really have that much of an effect. But the main point is that when you have a tremendous stress on the body, the body may adapt to that by lowering metabolic rate and lowering thyroid hormone in order to protect itself. So many times there might be a pattern of low T3 and low T4 on lab tests and the person does not need to go on thyroid hormone replacement. The person needs to evaluate what type of stressors are going on and fix those. When I say stresses, I don't just mean psychological stress. A stress on the body is by definition ed any additional demand. So it can be psychological, it could be physiological, it can be physical. Whatever extra demand is on the body, if that's an excess, it can really throw off our hormones. And unfortunately, we're living in a society where people are under way too much stress. Toxins, mercury and lead, those can be problematic and also poor liver function. Conversion of thyroid hormone primarily happens in the liver. That's where T4 is converted into T3. So sometimes people need to do a little bit of work to help the liver. And we are living in a very toxic world where the liver can be overburdened. So that's another factor. I want to go back to this chart and talk about reverse T3 for a moment and ask the question, why does the body even bother to produce reverse T3? Why make all this extra T4 just to convert it mostly into reverse T3? Why not just make less T4 and just move all that into T3. Well, this system allows the body to finally adjust exactly how much T4 to convert to T3 at any time. And in an acute crisis, if the body wants to make even more T3 than usual, it doesn't have to get everything started with the thyroid. It can just start change that conversion and start converting more T4 to T3. So reverse T3 is just the, the way that the body has a, of removing excess T4 that's not needed, but the body rather keep excess T4 around in case it really needs it. So this is part of the really intelligent way that the body fine tunes exactly how much hormones we are supposed to have from minute to minute. So if you're someone who has low T3, a low thyroid, active thyroid hormone, but really high reverse T3, instead of running out and getting a prescription for thyroid hormone, we should first ask, why is the body converting T4 into reverse T3? There might be something going on with the immune system, an infection, a um, chronic infection, subclinical infection. There might be some prolonged stress. Cortisol, the major stress hormone produced by the adrenal glands, and also epinephrine, which has the other name, adrenaline, those can interfere with this conversion in long term. Diet and blood sugar, I mentioned um, stress, I put that slide twice, but uh, it's important. Any type of chronic illness, metal, toxicity issues, any type of issue which is going to cause the body to want to slow down as a self-protective mechanism, that can lead to reverse T3. And the treatment is really going to be a holistic assessment to fix these underlying causes. So there really isn't going to be a high reverse T3 protocol or a high reverse T3 set of supplements that, that's right for everyone with high reverse T3. What we really need is a holistic assessment and each person needs to do what they need to do to help their body. Now, remember that when it comes to what type of stresses affect thyroid hormone function, the answer is any kind of stress can do it. Stress by definition is simply the body's response to any additional demand. You know, sometimes people might complain about supplements. They'll say that you really shouldn't need it. All it should take is diet and lifestyle. 
And, you know, I basically agree, but if we just look at what we're doing in our um, culture right now, you know, we have to ask the question, is this a hormonally balanced way to live? And you know, let's look at some jobs that people have with, like, the so-called multitasking and non-stop non stress. Again, not a hormonally balanced way to live. Ideally, as a culture, we, re we need to reassess what we're doing. Um, but in the meantime, people who are really sick and suffering, you know, need to take a holistic uh, account of what's going on and, you know, if possible, do what they need to do to get better. And that does include diet and lifestyle changes, but often it also includes supplements as basically a way to supplement um, living in not the most ideal environment. When interpreting uh, the numbers you get on lab tests, you should have T3 and T4 tested. Reverse T3 is also good to test, but labs should be considered within the context of each case. And also, are symptoms present? Symptoms of hypothyroidism. Is fatigue present? Coldness? Dry skin? Pulse nasal drip? If the labs seem to be not ideal, but you don't really have these symptoms, then there might not be a thyroid issue going on. Again, we don't want to treat labs, we want to treat the um, individual person. T3 and T4 lab ranges, well, they should be in the middle to upper half of reference range. However, if the thyroid hormone is low and you have symptoms, then you likely are hypothyroid or you have subclinical hypothyroidism, but the labs in that case are just not bad enough for an official diagnosis. However, if thyroid hormone is low and there are no symptoms of low thyroid hormone, then this may mean nothing. Um, because some people may need to be at a little bit of a lower state at the moment than someone else. So um, it has to be both. Um, low labs and see it clinically. Ultimately, seeing hypothyroidism clinically is what's most important, more important than the labs, but that doesn't mean that the labs are useless, they just need to be interpreted within context of the overall case.